Greetings and gratitude to all light forms and life workers who have found this day four of 31 days of card magics. I'm your host, Yulinus. You may call me the Third Eye Lion. So today is one of my favorite topics. It is the magic, which is the ancient teachings, abilities, and practices of changing your reality through conscious intent. This is the magic of the magician. I have quite a few of the magicians laid out here. The number is 12. There is 12 magicians. Each one is different. Each one has a different type of magic that they would like to teach you. I will show you from my experiences. Please don't take these as concrete. Work with your cards the way you work with them. Do your own research. These are just what I have found through my studies. So here's 12 different types of magical practices taught to you by 12 different types of magicians. We begin with the classical Visconti magician. A man in red, seated on an ordained box at a six-footed table. On the table is a cup, a plate, two coins, a knife, and a wand. He is doing divination with the plate. He is seeing the future and creating that future with the wand as he is writing. This type of magic is that of creative visualization. Visualize what you want to happen, picture the emotions of it happen, and then write it out or perform it with your own words or movement of how it will be when it happens. If you want something to happen, use what you have now, use all of the things at your disposal to write down, to create, and visualize what you want. If you have a strong vision, if you have a strong intention in what you are doing, then your magic should work. The intention and the belief is the first and most powerful key to any form of magic. He teaches us here, visualize, intend, actualize, grat gratifies. Bring that gratitude in and then it happens. So that is your first forms of magic. Next, we will move on to the Rider weight for the Hoi Polloi. This is as above, so below. As below, so above. This is the magical teaching of correspondence. Everything corresponds with something else. What you want to it to create externally already exists internally. If you want to tap into that internal thing, then bring forth the change externally. If you want to, if you want to change the internal, change the external. So find your own way of looking inside and looking outside, seeing the correspondence from above and below. They will always relate. Remember that your thoughts are your creation. The more you can master your thoughts, master what you have, the more that it will come in. So be grateful for the things that you have been brought and use that gratitude inside to bring forth what you want magically to create the intention, the outcome of any spellcraft. Visualize what that is. Understand what is going to happen before you even begin is the best way to not get burnt by the powerful flames that you are wielding. So in response to the Rider Waite, we have the Magus from Alistair Crowley's Thoth Tarot. This is to teach you the, her the Hermetic Understanding that the light you live, the life you live in the physical form, also exists in the energy form. You have more than two hands. You are a creator of life and flight. Find your own way to make this magic is that of inner visualization of tools and ceremony. You don't have to do your magic outside. You don't have to put on a cloak. You don't have to to have a huge ceremony, but you can do all of those things in your mind. You can have inner ceremony. You can have inner dynamic, religious, spiritual, magical practices. You can have every resource you've ever wanted inside your mind. 
You may not have access to certain magical objects. You may not have access to a magical space. You may not have access to magical music or vibrations. But no, you can always create that inside. You have all those things inside of you. That is the third. Next, we move on to one of the more popular ones. We have the Dark Magician from Yu-Gi-Oh. Understand that people will say your magic is dark. People will say you are evil. People will call you negative things. Why? Because you work with the darkness to bring forth the light. Many people claim they're the light and they actually bring forth darkness. Be, understand that you are dark. This is why you can be the light. His magic that he teaches is that of sigil craft, of writing symbols that you know, that you understand, that, or you don't understand, that come to you. They don't have to have a definitive meaning, but create your own sigils, your own symbols, your own different types of runes or different symbol systems and make spell circles like depicted here in this card. Make your own sigils, write it down on a piece of paper. It doesn't matter if no one else knows what it means. It doesn't matter if you don't know what it means. The fact you are doing it with a intention, your intention of why you are writing these symbols, your intentions of what the purpose of these symbols are, that is more important to what the symbol actually represents to anybody because it represents everything and nothing at the same time. But when you put an intention, that is what the universe knows it represents because you are the universe inside yourself. We move on now to the Oracle of Visions. There is no actual magician in this deck, but I grabbed the card that is the closest to the magician. Under this type of magic is that of misdirection and illusion. Many people say they are magicians. They say they do magic and they do so as misdirection, as confusion, as stage magic. Know that this is not any less valid than ritualistic ceremony magic or solitude intention magic. They all work differently. When you are performing for other people, when you are defying laws, or you are creating new things, or you're misdirecting, or you are using sleight of hand, these types of magical practices, even though they are based on deception, what they help you do is understand what is real. And the more you know what is real, the more you can confuse people about the line between real and not. Everything is magic, and this type is to perform magic. Like you are watching now, I am performing my magic by talking to you about magic. So this is the next way, is to be a performer in your magic. People will call it fake. People will not know what you are doing. They will label it as being something mysterious or evil. You know what it is. And those who are true will also know what it is. We now go to the Shadows of Oz. We have the man himself the Wizard of Oz. He was a humbug. He had no magical ability. He was a fraud fraudster, a stage magician, a sleight of hand expert like in the last card. Through a series of events, he ends up in a magical realm, in a world where everyone is magic. The one person who has no magic at all is the magician. In our world, where there is no magic, we believe that he has abilities. In a world where there is actual magic, he begins with no abilities. He hides behind a curtain and he does illusions to trick people. But after he is removed from power, he comes back and becomes a servant of the powerful good witch Glinda. He learns actual magic and he becomes one of the few people in the kingdom who is certified allowed to do magic in a magical kingdom. He began as someone who had no abilities, and he gained them. The lesson here is, is every magician needs to be a student, or you will not have any power. If you believe you know it all, if you believe you are skilled enough to be a magician but not be a student, you are missing the point of a magician. The magician learns his magic or her magic through study and application equally. So he teaches you here 
is application is not good without study and study is not good without application. You must have both. Take what you have in front of you and create with what you are learned, willing to learn and what you know inside. Bring all three of them together. As you may know, three is a very magical number. Oh yes it is. So I hope that can uh, clarify the magic of the Magician of Oz. Now we move on to one of my personal favorites. We have the Palmistry Magician from the Book of the Dead Tarot. At the table, he's a palm reader. He has cups for the uh, shell game. He has a crystal ball. He has a, a glass of water for water divination. This is to show you divination as magic. He wants to teach you that using candle magic, using water magic, using crystal balls, using the palm of the hand, using these systems that are not um, complete sciences, but they're not not scientific. So they are pseudoscience. They may not be able to be scientifically proven, but they cannot be scientifically disproven as well. So know that your magic, your way of doing it, either a tarot, palm reading, crystal balls, candles, signs, woodwork, water work, whatever type of divination, way that you find and perceive divine information is very important in your magical practice and is something that will really take it to the next level. If you haven't studied these things and you're drawn to the palm, you're drawn to the water, you're drawn to the flame, you are drawn to the crystals, those are the four elements. You are drawn to wind chimes. Whatever, you, you, whatever type of divination calls to you, work with it. And that is really powerful magic, when you can share it with other people. We now go to the psychic tarot of the heart. The magician is manifest. And he is teaching us that when you are grateful for what you have, you will be able to manifest whatever you want to have. Be grateful for that as though you already have it. The magician knows that he has all he needs. He has his thoughts. He has his labor. He has his love. And he has his passion. With those things, he can attract anything else because he knows that he has those energies inside him. This one is teaching us to bring forth that magic, to manifest it, to do ceremony, to do ritual where you bring forth what you want to create based on the idea that you have already had it. Why? Because there is no time. There is only this one now moment. And the more we can live in this one moment, the more we can create this moment. We get more proof of the things we want coming in. So, next we have Abra, Kadabra, and Alakazam. Yes, those are magical words. This card teaches us, and this is the magician of the Pokemon playing card deck. There isn't, uh, there's a few cards that would, could be considered the magician. I choose him for, to teach you that word magic, Abra, Dabra, Kadabra, Abra, Kadabra, Alakazam. These are powerful phrases. This individual began as a weak entity that can only teleport, then learns to master their their magic, their third eye begins to open. Their head is shaped like a pentagram. And the pentagram is a symbol of the five elements converging with deliberate intent. Then they become Alakazam. They become a master of magic. They become the most powerful mage that they can be. And bending the spoon is the idea of using your mental ESP, your mental projection, to affect the outside reality. To bend the spoon with your mind and the power that is processed. 
So this type of magic is to tell you that your words, your spellcraft is very important. You don't have to use these words, Abra, Kadabra, Alakazam. Make up your own magic words. Do research and find other magic words and change them up. Mix them up. Know that your speech, your magical invocations are your own key to that exact frequency of magic that only you have. So love that and find a way to keep growing and developing that. Sometimes it's only capable when you can trade your words, your magic with someone else who's doing another practice. Maybe you come up with this, these very powerful system of magical words. You use them for a while and you kind of reach a plateau. And then you talk to someone else who's using magical words and they say, I use the names of fruits as my magic words. Banana, apple, as different types of magic words. And you're like, wow, I've never heard of that before. And the next time you, you start casting magic, you say, ah, kiwi, and that's your new magic word. And this person is using yours because you traded. So trading information with other people is a very good way to evolve to the next level of your magic ability. So we're going to now move on to the Magic the Gathering Oracle. There is a lot of magicians in the game. Uh, Wizard is, a, is a very popular. What I am choosing is a planeswalker. So he is the shield mage. So the mage is a magician. He creates barriers and shields and he gives you hexproof, which means he prevents you from being attacked by other people's magic. So the teaching here is that you have the ability to walk to other realities. You have the ability to plane shift from who you are now, this world you live in now, to another world that you wish to create. You are the bridge between the two, and you are very powerful, so this type of magical teaching is that of creating shields, creating barriers, creating different protection. Protection magic is very powerful, and it's something that each magician should work with, at least a little bit. This could be casting circles, as he is doing. This could be creating um, invocations with smells, sounds that banish negative entities that project and protect your energy and your energy of your entity. So this type of shield magic or protection magic, there's many ways to do it. There's many people who teach it. You can make a circle, you can clap your hands, you can whistle. There's many things I have found that works. Do your research and understand that you have the ability to shift your reality. If you feel like you're under attack, if you feel like you're not protected, you can always shift to the plane of thought in which you are one with everything and nothing is out to get you. Okay, now we move on to the Pokemon card oracle. Hypno. This is to teach you the magic of hypnotism. Self-hypnosis is very, very powerful. You have two choices. You could either choose the dark path of negativity and anger and frustration, or you can choose the light path of happy, fairy, rainbows, or you can choose to walk both paths. And understand that it's good to walk both paths. When you work with self-hypnosis, understand that all hypnosis has to be self-hypnosis. No one can ever hypnotize you unless you are hypnotizing yourself based on their prompting. You have to allow it and let it and believe that it's happening or it won't happen. But if you work with self-hypnosis, you can overcome your blocks, your fears, your doubts, your processes. You can change a lot of yourself when you hypnotize yourself in a suggestive hypnotic state and you plant hypnotic suggestions that are positive, that are beneficial, that are kind, that are growing. You can only do it to yourself. So work with self-hypnosis. There's a lot here on YouTube. There's a lot of processes. Find your own way. But self-hypnosis is a very powerful form of magic. We will finish the last one here. To all the female viewers, you're not left out. We have the feminine, the divine feminine magician. She is from a deck that I created in a trance state. 
she represents the very powerful aspect of the of the four-eyed feminine this is the two physical eyes the non-physical mind's eye or third eye and then the and the non-physical heart eye when all, all of her eyes are open her mental space goes infinite she has a complete mastery over her thoughts and because of this she masters her environment she holds the flaming sword which is Bill billowing black smoke she holds the flame and knows that she is strong enough to hold it in her other hand is a shield she is protected she uses protection magic this type of magic is that of gardening magic when you plant a seed with an intention hold that seed in your hand say when the seed grows I will be successful in my business when this seed grows I will have the love I've always wanted. When this seed grows, I will have mastered this type of magical technique. When you put those intentions into the seeds you grow, and you plant them and you water them, this will create a huge echo in your reality. So conscious gardening is a very powerful and old form of magic. The birds have, have a tendency to take seeds far, far distance. The reason why there's certain plants growing on islands, reason why certain plants grow in other countries across oceans is because the birds trans transport the seeds and through their excrement. Understand that everything is a cycle. When you eat, you must release. And this is not negative. This is not a nasty thing. It's all part of life. It's all part of the balance. This is how new things grow, how new things develop. Take your seed, hold it in your hand, Squeeze it deep and say your intention out loud. Speak it into the seed. Breathe your breath onto the seed and then plant it deep into the ground. Water it every day. Say thank you seed. Thank you earth for co-creating with me. Be grateful for what you have and know that it is happening now. The thing you want to happen, be grateful now and it will continue to happen. This is what she teaches, the gardening magic and the mental magic working together so there you go friends those are 12 different types of magics from 12 different types of magicians let me know what you think about these in the comments there will be a new video tomorrow for day five i express my sincerest gratitude to you all thank you look forward to seeing you tomorrow